ROH World Champion Jonathan Gresham is out to prove that he is the best technical wrestler on the planet as he defends his title against Claudio Castagnoli. Can he win a world championship? I really do think so. I believe it, but not mine. Ring of Honor Wrestling presents Death Before Dishonor. Hello, everyone, and welcome oh to God, AEW Dark. I'm Excalibur, joined, as always, by Taz, and we are diving straight here into the action. Straight here, Taz, what am I even saying? It's good Off English. Off to a rousing start. The it's good English. The contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit, accompanied Let's by go. private party from sus, Punjab, sus, India, weighing 229 sus, pounds. Sus, Sure. Well, you see, uh, private sure. party, they got those diamond-studded AF1s. I don't know if you know what AF1s are, bro, but that's a New York thing, believe it or not. No, it's like the, like the AFO, except one more than that, right? No, it's Air Force Ones. I know what an Air Force you're, One is. You're yeah, from Come Detroit. On. You're from Detroit. You don't know nothing about no Nike sneakers. The hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We only wear car hearts. <laughs> Just call them. Well, we're starting things off with a singles match here tonight on AEW Dark. And as you saw on Rampage this past Friday night, Andrade still has the contract, still has the leverage for the former members of the AFO. That's why Private Party and George Joel coming out with a, the AFO video wall. And uh, George Joel out here doing Andrade's bidding. bidding. And also since uh, last Friday, Mark Quinn has, uh, has grown his hair back. Yeah, well, because he's got very intense follicles. Uh, I've talked to him about that. They, they grow rapido, like these chops by George Joel, rapido. Yeah, rapid chops to the chest of Luke Sampson by the Punjabi lion, George Joel. And Sampson, though, sends George into the corner, catches him as George tried to go over the top. Oh, Snake Eyes City, look at that. Oof. And now Sampson hits the rope. Oh, but George Joel comes back with a power slam. Wow. Excellent power by the powerful Joel. Powerful Joel Joel. That was really impressive for Sampson. He's a big, uh, big dude for sure. And it's good sense of urgency. Joel really getting all over him. And want to remind everybody that coming up this Saturday, July 23rd, live on pay per view, Bleacher Report and Fight.tv internationally. Ring of Honor's death before this honor. Jonathan Gresham defends the Ring of Honor World Championship against Claudio Castagnoli. Samoa Joe defends the Ring of Honor World Television Championship against Jay Lethal, Wheeler Yuta, and Daniel Garcia meet for the Ring of Honor Pure Championship and FTR. The Briscoes collide. Best two out of three falls for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship. All of that and so much more. Ring of Honor, death before this honor this Saturday. You see Joel Joel nail Samson with a big forearm, but here comes Luke Samson with his own forearms. Not, he's not using Joel Joel's forms, he's using his own. <laughs> right, right, no, <laughs> Luke Samson's, he's using Luke Samson's form. Oh, whoa, look at the strength of Joel Joel. Yeah, he's a strong man. George Joel, the fall away slam. George Joel screaming nonstop during the match. That shows he's intense, I guess. He was saying something, well, sir? Mean, Come on, yes. He, I was going to say, George Joel screams nonstop backstage. He's at catering. He's in the <laughs> toilet. The medical team had to check on him. They said, is something wrong? He's like, no, I'm just intense. <laughs> ah, I just want to fight. It's 1 p.m. What are you doing, bro? Anyway. <laughs> A lot of pre-workout in that guy. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Joel, ah. Joel, yeah, he's really... All he's got to do to Luke Sampson is shave his head. Sampson, right? You take his hair off. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sampson and Delilah. Yeah, that's the one. And not, not the Tom Jones Delilah. Tom Jones, if that is his real name. <laughs> oh, you got me with that one. <laughs> Luke Sampson. Block of the suplex attempt. And oh, elevates Jorah Joel. Jorah sent crashing down. Yeah, and you see Private Party, you hear Private Party telling Jorah, get up, get up, and trying to inspire him to get moving here. You don't want to get upset here by Luke Sampson. Now, uh, Luke Sampson, though, trading shots with Jorah Joel, center of the ring, and Jorah, big elbow Ooh. strikes, but Sampson comes back with one of his own. Private Pod is not impressed with Jorah Joel. You can hear him. No, they are they are furious with Jorah on the outside. And, and now Jorah gets the jawbreaker. Luke Sampson 
Luke Sampson's gonna put away George Joel here. This is an upset in our first match. Yeah, he's close. Luke Sampson is close. Oh, well, you know what that means. Straps it down. They were all taking their straps down lately. George Joel, the back elbow. Look at Private Party up on the apron. And George Joel, the pump kick. Luke Sampson didn't even see it coming. One, two, three. Wow. Yeah. Winner of this match, Joram. Oh, I'll tell you, Luke Sampson should have never you know, did the, uh, he's watching too many Wardlow matches, trying to do what Wardlow does, taking the straps down. That helped him get beat, to be honest with you. You know, stay focused, man. George Joel's no joke. Yeah, George Joel with the assistance of Private Party coming away with the victory here tonight. Our opening contest, AEW Dark. George Joel, victorious. Tomorrow on TBS, it's Fighter Fest Week 2. Darby Allen looks for revenge on Brody King. You're facing the pain maker. And the barbed wire everywhere death match. Bring your pain maker. I'm gonna hurt you and enjoy it. AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite, live tomorrow at 8 on TBS. Coming up next here on AEW Dark, Lee Moriarty, Tiger style, all caps, no spaces in action, next. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, weighing 195 pounds, Tyga Style, Lee Moriarty. Taz, you ever go to a restaurant or something, you order like plate of pasta, and then they just come out and they bring you two? Well, I, uh, I really don't eat carbohydrates anymore, so uh, no. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Well, but uh, uh, hold on one second. His opponent already in the ring, Ren Jones. You're trying to get me to gain a bunch. Ren, wait, hold on. This young man's name is Red Jones. That's what I'm understanding here. Ren, Ren, R E. Right, no, I have my, I have this. I'm looking at your sheet. My sheet says the same thing. Well, remind me to send him a C and D later. But back to your pasta. What were we talking about? Oh, uh, so, so you literally get twice as much as you order. I mean, that's that's usually a good thing, right? Yeah, usually, yeah. If if you're not you know, watching your waistline, yes. Right, okay, all right. Anyway, uh, uh, apropos of nothing. Anyway, Lee Moriarty now with the uh, arm of Ren Jones. Well, I feel like I had this whole thing prepared before the match started, and I just ruined it. Oh, I apologize. That was a nice help no, by Jones. No, it's okay, Taz. Taz, I, I know you've been... Uh, I know you've been watching uh, watching your your intake and and yeah. really gotta c congratulate you on uh, a long time looking tip top shape man. I've been doing this for two months and you finally congratulate me. Thank you. Better late than never. But here we go. Thirty five years. Thirty five years. <laughs> and Moriarty picks the ankle and now returns to the arm. And remember this Friday night Fighter Fest concludes at AEW Rampage on TNT 109 Central. Lee Moriarty will go one on one with Dante Martin and we saw Stokely Hathaway uh, who, you know, I mean is the publicist for the hashtag Jade brand. Uh, he was uh, sticking his nose in, in Lee Moriarty's business. Yeah, no he was. He was I mean I think that he feels like there's there's something to Lee for sure. He's a tan he is a very talented man as we know and and uh, but uh, you know what? I I I I, I think side I'm um, Sidell is got a lot of good synergy going on with Dante, obviously, right? Agreed. Dante and Sidell. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You know. So I do feel in this matchup, Dante and Lee, it should be, you know, two young people with like different styles. It should be pretty interesting. Yes. I mean, stylistically, a very a uh, very contrasting type of matchup. And Lee Moriarty, I mean, he had a great performance this past Friday night at Rampage when he challenged Jonathan Gresham for that Ring of Honor World Championship. But, you know, Gresham, now that he's part of Tully Blanchard Enterprises, I think, taking some shortcuts that are, are surprising to people. Yeah, but it's helpful. I mean, he wants to hang on to that title. It's smart to do. Nice deep arm drag by Moriarty right there. There's another Second one, Moriarty maintains control of the arm of Ren Jones. And uh, speaking of Jonathan Gresham, he will be defending that Ring of Honor World Championship this coming Saturday, July 23rd, Death Before Dishonor. He'll be taking on the Blackpool Combat Club's 
Claudio Castagnoli. Claudio ne has never held a world championship before in his career. But right now, Morin already sent hard into that middle turnbuckle yeah. pad. Well, Gresham's gonna have his hands filled with Claudio big time. And speaking of Gresham, he's actually in this episode right here, Excalibur of Dawn. Yeah, John Gresham will be coming up a little later on tonight, competing ahead of Death Before Dishonor. Brent Jones. And that was a stomp, and that was that was to the inside thigh of Lee Moriarty, but that was dangerously close to being a low blow, Taz. Yeah, Shambank City, as we call that, and there's a big running elbow. Nowhere for Jones to go in the corner. Oh, watch out. Oh, but Jones comes back with a splash, and now a diving crossbody with Lee Moriarty trapped against the ropes. Yeah, I think he's got Bear Bronson's rope chain on, but I digress. One, two. You never know what happens. You know, you never know. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe you know who went in someone's bag and gave somebody else. You know who's rope chain. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, oh, are we having a Ryan Evans <laughs> situation here? You never know. So, <laughs> Ren Jones, the pump handle on Lee Moriarty. Moriarty in in trouble here. Right, he's talking some smack. He shouldn't have did that there. That that. Then Lee had time to counter here. That's an overhook, a wizard. That's a wizard right there. Almost like a hip toss, but it's an overhook called a wizard lock. Some people don't know that, but I'm here to educate. That's what I do. I'm an analyst. Whack his ass. Thank you, Taz. You're welcome. And uh, Rent Jones with a right hand to the jaw of Lee Moriarty, but that may have awoken something in Lee, who's now cracking Jones with lefts and rights. Now Jones loves this match. There's so many Jones. We're saying Jones nonstop. It's just nuts. <laughs> oh, Yakuza kick, Jones. There it is. Good job, always oh, calm you the man. And Lee Moriarty waiting for Jones to get up to his feet. And Lee, the running elbow strike. Ren Jones stunned Moriarty. Now goes under. The suplex by Lee Moriarty. Yeah. Kind of turned to the side. It was a good throw right there by Lee. He's got Jones down and out right now. And now Lee Moriarty, the knees to the midsection. You can see controlling the head of his opponent. And now Lee looking for that Border City stretch. He's got it locked in. Ren Jones is in the center of the ring. And Jones is forced to tap out. The winner of this match by submission, Lee Moriarty. I mean, just a suggestion, Steel City Stretch would sound better if you're from the Steel City, but Border City Stretch works also. Well, I mean, it was a technique passed down to Lee Moriarty by Alex Shelley, the man mm. who innovated the Border City Stretch from Well, there's from been Detroit, other submissions, Michigan. other submissions that are passed down and people rebrand them, correct? That's true, Ted. <laughs> yes. You are 100% right. I think my offspring does that, but I digress. And now Lee Moriarty. I'm getting aggravated now. <laughs> With momentum headed into the rampage. I'm here with Fuego Del Sol. You have a big match here tonight on Dark against QT Marshall. Now, given your history and unfinished business, what's going through your mind right now? Lexi, do you know why they call me Fuego Del Sol? Because I'm fired up. I'm fired up about this match tonight. I'm fired up when I look at the young names they say are the future of AEW. Because when it comes to this might work, for me, this is light work. And none of those names hold a candle to Fuego Del Sol. But you know who else gets people fired up, Lexi? My opponent tonight, QT Marshall. And I know you're supposed to be unbiased, Lexi, but let's, let's be honest, you don't like that son of a bitch either. But he's just as talented as he is loud. And I've seen the big matches and the big moments he and the factory have had over the past few months. And I understand why he made me that offer. It was, it was very tempting. But we have unfinished business, like you said, Lexi. Because over a year ago, before I even had my contract here in AEW, we put on one of the best AEW dog matches this company's ever seen. And as sweet as his offer was, I think it would be even better to end this once and for all, to drop QT on his neck one more time, and to use this fire to burn the whole damn factory to the ground.
All right, here we go. We got a little one-on-one uh, -on -one action featuring Serena D right here in the women's division on AEW Dog. The following contest is set for one fall with a total weight team minute time limit. Introducing first from Oakton, Virginia, the professor, Serena D. Taz, I don't ever remember seeing you come to the ring with the Ta uh, Team Taz Dojo flag. No, well, we had a flag. It didn't say Team Taz. It just had a big T on it. But I had the uh, students from my dojo, this was 1996, mm -hmm. actually holding the flag. But we had an actual flag pole. So I didn't wear it, but I didn't have the beauty of Serena Deep. So if I did, I would have maybe used it as a, uh, a drape. Uh, of course, my, uh, my back, maybe. I don't know, something to that sort. And her opponent already in the ring, Viva Van. Serena Deep. <laughs> All right, let me turn. The most important question I have about Viva Van is: Does does, does, does she wear Vans? Viva, uh, that's what I'm wondering. We'll have to see if our uh, our camera guys can can get a close up of the footwear of Viva Van. But I was about to say Serena Deeb competing here tonight and coming up this Saturday. Deeb will be challenging Mercedes Martinez for the Ring of Honor. Women's World Championship. We've seen Mercedes and Serena competing side by side, but it, it didn't seem like that that was a, a union that was going to last long. And uh, sure enough, Tez, Serena turning her back on Mercedes Martinez and setting her sights on Mercedes wearing her bottom Women's World Championship. Yeah, no, good point, and uh, you're right what you're bringing up there, Excalibur. We knew that that thing would, was going to combust, and it sure did. Nice overhook arm drag by Serena Deeb. Um, you know, they're both competitive ladies, obviously, Martinez and Deeb, you know, and they kind of were trying to outdo each other, but having success as a Serena team. Serena Deeb in control of that left wrist of Viva Van, and as I do get a look at Viva's footwear, not Vans, but uh, that's... <laughs> I just want to remind everybody that immediately following AEW Dark tonight, stay tuned. Not that you really stay tuned to a YouTube channel, but premiering immediately after AEW Dark tonight will be the countdown to death before dishonor for Ring of Honor's big pay-per-view event this Saturday night, July 23rd, pay-per-view Bleach Report and Fight TV. It's Viva Van, big roundhouse kick. Yeah, kicked uh, Serena Deep right in the side of the head. Uh-oh. Serena elevated over Viva Van and now has the arms of Van trapped. And uh -oh. Serena doing a Doing a good job That's of maintaining her balance. Well, oh, roll up here. Serena changes directions once again, and now sits back. Got to tap out here, I think. And she might be tapping. She looks like she's tapping. I mean, I would tap. Someone's sitting, sitting on, on your head. head. And then wrenching your arms. I was going to compliment the balance of Serena D, because had she fallen back into the turnbuckles, that would have been a rope break. But Serena was able to maintain her position and now get Viva Van in this torturous submission hold. Yeah, that's true. Sitting on the head, clasping your own hands while you have the arms bent back. I feel like we're watching a female version of an helico. Yeah, I mean, Serena Deeb, they don't call her the professor of professional wrestling for nothing. And Viva Van gets, breaks free, but Serena just marches right in and launches an uppercut. And two uppercuts at Viva Van. Excalibur, why do you keep yelling at the talent telling them one more? Why would you get off mic and do that? <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> well, I mean, they give us these cough buttons. I gotta use it for some Damn! <laughs> and Viva Van and Serena Deeb jockeying for position. Serena now with the underhooks, rolls through, looks for the backslide. Viva, a roundhouse kick, but the sweep takes down Serena Deeb. And now Viva Van comes in, the lariat. Cover. Viva frustrated, but she can't afford to get taken off her game, especially with a competitor like Serena D. No, you got to stay focused. You can't, you just can't. You, you got to be better than that. You can't get pissed off. You got to stay on focus with someone like Deeb because she will capitalize and take you out like we're watching. Oh, Serena Deeb, all it takes 
is just a sliver of opportunity, and Serena Deeb can regain the advantage like she did right here. The catapult into the bottom rope. Viva Van in serious trouble. I think uh, the trouble's only gonna get worse here. Deeb's got a look in her eyes like she's really fixing to hurt Viva. Yeah, well, I mean, we saw Dynamite last Wednesday night. Serena almost uh, injuring the knee of oh, Anna J, oh. but now the Deep Talks center of the ring. Serena covers and gets the win. The winner of this match, Serena Deep. Well, Serena Deep looking sharp as she has in Death Before Dishonor this Saturday night to challenge Mercedes Martinez for that Ring of Honor World Championship. And Taz, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who do you got, champ or challenger? I got to tell you, I'm going with challenger. I'm going with Deep. I think she's got a lot of momentum. We're watching. Look at this right now. Sending a message probably to Martinez. Yeah, that's Serenity Lock after the bell. That's how she tried to injure the knee of Anna J. And Serena Deep. The extracurricular activities, the punishment after the bell, and I believe you're right, Taz. That is a message sent to Mercedes Martinez. Watch your back because the professor's coming. Yeah, you can see it in Serena's eyes. She's all business. I think Martinez, as tough as she is, might be in a lot of trouble. Well, we will find out who leaves Death Before Dishonor as the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion this Saturday night, live on pay-per-view, Bleacher Report, and Fight TV. Last September. 20,177 AEW fans are here. History was made in New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, what a night, what a scene. On Wednesday, September 21st. Oh my the U.S. Open's signature venue in Queens opens its gates yet again for the experience of a lifetime. AEW Dynamite and Rampage Grand Slam is back. There we go, Excalibur. We had a one-on-one -on -one contest featuring Marina Shafir, but she's going against a very tough young lady in Amber Nova. This should be a good matchup right here on Dog right now. The following contest is set for one fall with a total 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Moldova, the problem, Marina Shafir. As of late, we've seen Marina Shafir form a formidable tag team with Nyla Rose, the native beast, and now Vicky Guerrero back in the mix. I think uh, Marina Shafir and Nyla Rose are gonna be causing trouble to put it lightly in the AEW women's division. And I want to talk about trouble. I think Amber Nova may be in for a little trouble here with the problem, Marina Shafir. And her opponent from Hilton Head, South Carolina, Amber Nova. Hi, Amber Nova. Uh, bumped into her. We were over there in Savannah in her neck of the woods near Hilton Head. So it was, uh, I was having a, a spot of tea and catering. Then I drank some coffee. Amber was there getting some tea and coffee also. Yeah, Amber. She said she loves my commentary on Dark and Dynamite, and she never mentioned you. <laughs> <laughs> What's to say, uh, Amber? Amber pulled up uh, to the building in uh, in Savannah, Georgia, the, the the wonderful N Market Arena, in a in a yep. classic uh, classic Ford truck, which she she had restored herself, and so. Uh, Amber, no. She's mechanically. In, I just you hear what I just said. Mechanically, my bad. Mechanically <laughs> inclined. And, okay. and she's anyway, yes. mechanically inclined as well. Oh. <laughs> you did hear me. I did. Whoa, watch out. <laughs> Roundhouse avoided by Amber Nova, but Marina Shafir catching Amber Nova. And, oh, Nova, though, able to escape, slip out, boot to the midsection to kick. And now Amber Nova grabs the side headlock. Yeah, you got to be careful here because she's got really good balance, Marina does, and real good with... Submissions and also knee breakers because that was really well done right there and a nice hip throw kind of an Ogoshi type of throw an Excellent Jadoka is Marina Shafir well documented. Oh ankle lock here. Yeah. I'll take care of the play by play. It's okay. I'll do it all <laughs> I got it covered by I know, I know you do Tess. That's <laughs> I just taking a sip of my tea 
Ever know, though. <laughs> yeah. Gets oh, yeah. Feet. Ooh, I'm looking at that tee. Oh, that was out. not an NZ gear. That was a kick across the face, and Marina Shafir yeah. just, just clinched her jaw and has fought through it. Really on that ankle, yeah. Amber Nova trying to grab a grab anything she can on Marina Shafir. That wow, Shafir. Even though she just eat, she just ate four consecutive elbows, and Marina Shafir still on her feet. She was rocked though, and that's why she just got snap married by Amber Nova. But the knee, look at Amber Nova. The knee is really messed up. Back to the throw, the hip throw, and. Marina Shafir now with the arm, the leg, and the head captured. She calls this submission greedy, and it scores the win for Marina Shafir. The winner of this match, Marina Shafir. Well, Marina Shafir with the victory. An impressive performance, a dominant victory for the problem, Marina Shafir. Saturday, July 23rd, FTR is out to prove yet again why they are the best tag team in the world today as they put their ROH World Tag Team Championships up for grabs against the Briscoes in a best two out of three falls match. Ring of Honor Wrestling presents Death Before Dishonor. Coming up next here on AEW Dark Big Time Singles Match, Anthony Henry goes one on one with the Japanese phenomenon, Konosuke Takeshita. Next. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Osaka, Japan, weighing 232 pounds, Konosuke Takeshita. Des, you know how there's a, there's some guys that come running out uh, out through the tunnel. They're really animated. They're really amped up, and then you know they they try to they they struggle to keep up that pace throughout the entire match. Takeshita, almost the opposite. Throw it back down to Dasha one And sec. his opponent already in the ring from Augusta, Georgia, weighing 175 pounds, Anthony Henry. Whereas Takeshita, very calm, very, very confident, but, uh, you know, like not unnecessarily hyping himself up, I think. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And it, it's smart. It's smart to do that. You know, everybody, you know, you know this from years when you wrestled, everybody has their own way to come into a match, right? So I agree with you. I was the same, you know, I mean, like, I, but everyone's different, right? Everybody goes into their fight their own way. But I get what you're saying about Takeshka, and he does do that. You're right. Now, Anthony Henry's on the hop, and they just got nailed. Wow. Yeah, Takeshka fired in with that leg lariat after the elbow strike exchange, and now Takeshita gonna hit the ropes. Henry looks for the trip once again. Bypass sends Takeshita in. Takeshita looking for sunset flip. Nope, Henry, oh, cranks the neck. Great job, and he stuck it. He stayed there, uh, Anthony Henry did. Again, he's gonna do it. Wow, I've never seen anyone do that, that, that type of maneuver on the neck that long, like stick that, that long two in a row. That was impressive by Anthony Henry. Anthony Henry with a kick to the back. And just a reminder, AEW yes. will be headed back to New York State this September 1st on Wednesday, September 7th in Buffalo, New York at the Key Bank Center. Then one week later, we'll be making our debut in Albany, New York at the MVP Arena on Wednesday, September 14th. And then Grand Slam, we return to Queens on Wednesday, September 21st at the Arthur Ashe Stadium at the U.S. National Tennis Center. Tickets for all three events go on sale this Friday, July 22nd, 10 a.m. Eastern at AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. Lateral press here by Henry. Can't wait for those New York shows. I'm gonna take my boat to all of them. My yacht, I'll have my guy, you know, drive it there. You know, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> all of them, all the shows. So, yeah, I got I got the moat rolling, everything. I got the boat, tugboat, all hey, we, got, we got Erie Canal Jones over here. <laughs> Well, I got Toad Bay Beach right down the road. I jump over there, I get to Queens, go to Albany, everything. I'm good. Buffalo, whatever you want to do. Look at these kicks here. Oh, yeah, the kicks, but they seem seem to have woken something inside Takeshita. And, oh, Takeshita 
drop to the mat. And Taz, I mean, maybe Takeshita still feeling the effects of the physical match from uh, last Wednesday against AEW Interim World Champion John Moxley. Yeah, that was a battle. He had a hell of a showing Takeshita did against Mox. It was a fight and a half. Now he just caught that leg and hooks this Anthony Henry up in the air for maybe a power bomb, but nice counter out by Henry. Takeshita really drew back with that elbow strike and now ducks the lariat, ducks the back elbow and comes in with the Takeshita line. And Takeshita now back up to his feet. Anthony Henry on the outside trying to put some distance between himself and the champion. He's fighting on, but he cannot. Takeshita takes to the skies. And he's a large young man. This is not a small guy here. You know, he's <laughs> TV doesn't do him justice. He's a big guy. Probably, what, 6'2", 6'3"? Uh, he's he's yeah, got six size. Two. Yeah. But, yeah, about 220, 225-ish. And uh, the elbow strike followed up by the chop to the chest. Takeshita sends Henry into the ropes. No, Henry reverses. And, uh-oh. Anthony Henry. Oh, no, that's dangerous. Yeah, I thought Takeshita may be going for a vertebraker, but instead, he's just got an inverted submission on Anthony Henry, and now bashes Henry, backs him into the into the turnbuckles. Yeah, that's, uh, you're defenseless if you're Anthony Henry. I never had that done to me, and I'm not, I, would, I don't think I would accept that happening, to be honest. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're defenseless going into those buckles. Takeshita with the uppercut. Anthony Henry very nearly spilled to the floor, but caught himself at the last moment, but now, Takeshita, big superplex off the ropes, dropping Henry down, and Takeshita, lateral press. To, and Taz, I mean, talk about the, the core strength required of Takeshita to get somebody, I mean, he almost deadlifted Henry off the ropes with that superplex. Yeah, it's a hard it's hard to do because your your base is on a rope, is on two ropes, you know, on a cable. So it's tough. So you do have to your point, you do have to use your core strength a lot. And that was a nice counter to that side lot takedown cradle there. Uh oh. And Takeshita reversing into the crucifix. Takeshita was looking for that blue thunder bomb. Henry had it scouted, but now Takeshita in the cross face, the left arm captured, but Henry doing a good job of getting his hips underneath him. That's right, he knows to get to that rope. Anthony Henry's uh, very good, oh nice, he's very good on the mat. He's got a, co a co cover here. He stacked up Takeshita, that was really well done by Anthony Henry. Oh, but Takeshita, oh. there's the blue thunder bomb. Osaka Thunder Bomb is more like it. I think I just renamed it. I'm gonna go 50-50 Jones on the t-shirt with the cash can. There it is. <laughs> Cut, cutting deals right here on Dog, bro. <laughs> Shop at EW.com. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now Anthony Henry in the corner. Takeshita charging in. Went for the jumping oh. knee strike in the corner. But instead, Henry intercepted it. Now, oh, look at that. Crossing the legs of Takeshita. And then a combination dragon screw. Oh, oh man. Takeshita was trying for a desperation lariat, but a Anthony Henry came in with a leaping kick to counter it. He's grabbing at that bicep there. All right, nothing fancy about that. And Anthony Henry ate it, and he's going to bring one of his own. Oh, a round kick. Yeah, I, I thought Henry was going to try for an elbow exchange, but instead, that kick, and I mean, that makes sense after the dragon screw, Taz. Yeah, no, it does. But now, you're right, I, he probably should have stuck to the round kick after that twisting dragon screw he did. To catch the, I mean, you can hear the sound of the contact ringing out through AEW Universal to catch another big elbow strike. That was a big, big one. A drop kick. Oh, but Henry co comes back at the end. He gave it to Kesha with the lariat. Oh, but Henry comes back with a Gomin Gary. Takeshita covered. No. Snatches that armbar right there. Almost, well, it is a double wrist lock. He's, he's got it on a little bit different, but he's, I like that he's sitting on the head as he has the double wrist on. It's good stuff. Version of a Kimura, as most people might know. If you don't, you know now. How about that? If you happen to be just surfing through the internet and you fell upon us, now you know what this is. See? <laughs> You just skip to about uh, 20 minutes into a YouTube video. <laughs> oh, why not? Oh, and now looking for the Juji Katami. Yeah, he's got it and, locked out. And Takeshita desperately trying to clench his hands to relieve the pressure on his arm, his shoulders. And Anthony Henry hammering at him, but 
Now you see Henry adjusting his position, transitioning to a triangle and using the elbow strikes. And this could be this could be bad for Takeshita. He, he may be going to sleep or maybe not. Good he hoisted up Henry. Yeah, good power and strength. And a massive power bomb to no Anthony Henry able to kick out. Oh. oh. Driving knee strike to the face and the jumping knee from Takeshita. That's, That's gotta heel. be it. Yeah, he's got it. He floats over, he covers, and he gets the win. The winner of this match, Konosuke Takeshita. I'll tell you though, that Anthony Henry put up a hell of a fight. That was a really good match, good battle between these two guys. It certainly was Konosuke Takeshita. After the loss to John Moxley last Wednesday night at Dynamite, comes back with an impressive victory here tonight on AEW Dark. The Japanese phenomenon, Konosuke Takeshita, it was a physical match, but he survived it. He persevered, and he came away with the win. And big things are in the future for this man, Konosuke Takeshita. Coming up next here on AEW Dark, the Ring of Honor World Champion, the Foundation, Jonathan Gresham, in action next. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, weighing in at 201 pounds, he is the Ring of Honor World Champion, Jonathan Gresham. Jonathan Gresham set to compete here tonight on AEW Dark, and of course, this Saturday night, he will be putting his Ring of Honor World Championship on the line against Claudio Castagnoli of the Blackpool Combat Club. Cannot wait for that matchup. His opponent already in the ring, Jordan Oasis. Jordan Oasis with a, a tough challenge before him, going one-on-one uh, -on -one with Gresham. Gresham, who this past Friday night at AEW Rampage successfully defended that Ring of Honor World Championship against Lee Moriarty, though uh, I will say that Gresham had a tiny bit of help from Tully Blanchard and Tully Blanchard Enterprises, Taz. Yeah, no, and that's the thing, you know, strength in numbers, as the old cliche goes, and now Gresham being with with Tully and crew there, I mean, that really helps. Nice uh, handstand down tonight. Good athleticism by Grisham. Look, Grisham is as advertised. He's got a tremendous history and talent in between the ropes. Excellent on the mat. Tough to find many guys better than him. He's uh, his passion to be the best, you know, pure wrestler as far as mat work goes and exchanging of holds, he's very passionate about that. And he's very good, he's tremendous. He's, that's hence his chance that he's got a championship, well, the Ring of Honor championship. But dealing with Castignoli, dealing with Claudio, it's, that's like a different deal there. And, and I'm not talking about the, the size difference part, because a guy like Gresham, you know, he's used to being undersized to most guys. I can speak on that, because that's how I was in my career. So you like that, you, you, that's what, how you compete. But Claudio is truly a different beast, Excalibur. You know what I'm saying? Just totally different. Yeah, because, I mean, Claudio, well, you know, he may not have the, the A-plus technical ability of uh, Jonathan Gresham. Maybe Claudio's an A. His power is, is just a complete game changer. There's nobody like Claudio Castagnoli inside the world of professional wrestling. His, I, mean, I, I agree. His, He's, it's incredible the things that he's capable of doing and you know to match that with his agility his speed and then his technical prowess as Gresham fakes the, the kick to the shin and there's the drop kick by Jonathan Gresham I think Gresham I mean this is it's, it's a really interesting matchup to see you know who has the bigger advantage is it Gresham's technical ability will it be Claudio's power and you know at, at the end of the day whoever does have the advantage is going to walk out as the Ring of Honor world champion yeah, no doubt. And but not now speaking on Gresham here, you know, it's not just like his technical his great technical ability, but his American strong style, his traditional pro wrestling is phenomenal. We just saw him throw a beautiful drop kick. This big man is in the ring when he just chopped the hell out of him a couple of times. Like, you know, and, and he's bringing hard chops. He's a physical guy, he can go. And um, 
you know, I, just, I think it's going to be an awesome battle with Castagnoli and, and Gresham for sure. Jordan Oasis laying in some chops. A little bit of a receipt for Jonathan Gresham. And now the splash in the corner. Gresham staggers out towards the ropes. Jordan Oasis looking to string together some. Oh, the cannonball set on to the back of Gresham. Very good. Very innovative. I'm sure that's been done before. I don't recall seeing that. That was very cool, though, I got to say. And Gresham avoids the lariat, comes up, work on Rana, rolls through, rolls back, and Gresham. Oh, the stomp uh -oh. to the knee. Uh oh. He, he, this guy will signal, single out a limb, Excalibur, and work on it. You can see he's hell-bent on that ankle and that knee right now. And Gresham, wow, look at that. That's an interesting way to get a win. The winner of this match, the Ring of Honor World Champion, Jonathan Gresham. A submission victory for Jonathan Gresham just by smashing the knee into the mat. And Tess, did you notice the knee, was, knee wasn't just going straight and down, up and down? It was going left and right. I mean, that was gnarly. Very much. And Jonathan Gresham, victorious. All right, next up here, Excalibur, on this episode of Dark, the ROH Pure Champion. That is Will Yuta. He is coming up right now on Dark. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing 199 pounds, representing the Blackpool Combat Club. He is the Ring of Honor Pure Champion, Wheeler Utah. Perhaps the biggest week in Wheeler Yuta's career is coming up, and we're going to touch on that in a moment now. Back down to Dasha. His opponent already in the ring, Bryce Donovan. Wheeler Yuta, of course, going to be competing here tonight one-on-one -on -one with Bryce Donovan. Then tomorrow night, AEW Dynamite Live, 8, 7 Central on TBS. Wheeler Yuta teams up with John Moxley to take on the best friends, Trent Barretta and Chuck Taylor. And of course, Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy, former mentors of Wheeler Yuta. And Wheeler Yuta since then has parted ways with uh, Chuck and Orange and now thrown in his lot with the Blackpool Combat Club. And then of course, Yuta this Saturday night will put his Ring of Honor Pure Championship on the line against Daniel Garcia at Ring of Honor's Death Before Dishonor live this Saturday night, 8, 7 Central on pay-per-view, Bleacher Report and Fight TV. Well, right now, you see Will Yuta showing a speed advantage Donovan's trying to get something going, but he can't right now against the ROH Pure Champ. Yuta sits out with a senton, goes into the pin predicament, but just a two count. And Taz, that tag team match tomorrow night is incredibly interesting. Yuta yeah, oh, and yeah. Moxley versus Beretta and Chuck. Well, because Trent and Chuck, to the point you made as you were promoting the match, they know this young man, Will Yuta, really, really, really well. So, you know, it's going to be tough, and Mox, Mox knows that, that his partner uh, against these opponents, these opponents know his partner extremely well, so it does make for a hell of a battle, which I'm looking forward to calling. Um, and I think you'll be there calling it with me also, and someone I else will see I hope so. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bryce Donovan. Be selfish. Uh, now look at this, Yuta. Bridging back and Bryce Donovan in trouble. And Tess, the thing about that bridge is it allows Wheeler to use his upper body almost like an anchor to prevent Donovan from getting close to the ropes. That's exactly what it is. So his whole body, all of his body, his upper body weight goes right into the joint on that submission hole towards the knee of Donovan. So it makes it even more lethal, you know. Yuta sent into the ropes. We got the boot up into the jaw of Donovan. Now Wheeler. It's the ropes, but the boss man slam by Donovan too. No, Yuta kicking out. I like what I like what Donovan did there. He caught that slam. He caught Wheeler on the run. He's got some size on him, this young guy Donovan here, and 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 he went for a quick try to steal a win, which was smart, very smart by him. Yeah, but I, I think the last thing that Bryce Donovan wants to do is trade with Wheeler Yuta. Because Yuta, I mean, he was already a good striker before he joined the Blackpool Combat Club, but now he's a great striker. Sure thing, yes. No, I agree with you. But Donovan's in control here. He should not take too long. Got to be careful. Donovan oh, what an elbow. leaps. Yeah, drops the elbow on Wheeler. And Wheeler kicking out 
That was barely a one from referee Mike Posey. Shaves of Abdullah the Butcher, except he got off the ground more than two inches. <laughs> so it was a very mild shave, not a big shave, you know. <laughs> but I digress. So, Well, I mean, you know, when uh, Abdullah the Butcher would drop that elbow, there'd be a lot of shade underneath him. There would be. But that elbow, but then he did it, was cool, though. I got to say, he did do that cool elbow. Elbow, I should say. But now look at this here. He's got a half in there and across the chin. He's holding the head. So he's got good control of a quarter of the body. On, not a quarter now, some but a version of it. And Wheeler Yuta, though, is twisting his hips, getting his feet, his knees underneath him. And now Yuta back up to a vertical position. Drags Donovan down to the mat. Swing and a miss by Yuta. And Yuta instead comes through. Manhattan drop. And Enzi Geary drives Bryce Donovan back to the corner. And Wheeler Yuta comes in with the elbow strike. And Yuta kept going with his momentum right to the top. So smart. Yeah, Yuta. Forearm right to the head. Not yeah. done yet. And Wheeler Yuta. See, he's got a he's got a look on his face, an intense look. I think the end might be near for Bryce Donovan, or perhaps not. Don Donovan, and he grabs the trunks, but Yuta's still able to kick out. Yeah, out of that standing switch, he grabbed the trunks, but it wasn't enough. But the rangy athlete, Donovan, with the kick, but look at Yuta. Yuta the drop step behind the German suplex. Two, three, wow! The winner of this match, the Ring of Honor Pure Champion, Wheeler, Utah. Well, I'll tell you, I, I like that, man. I like that. I, I like you get a win on a guy. Let's take a look at it with a German suplex. You know, Yuta has a tremendous uh, German suplex. Really good back off there, good bridge. And you don't need to get any fancier. You hit a nice German with a bridge, and you're able to stack Wheeler the guy. Yuta, good stuff. The Ring of Honor Pure Champion. Coming up this Saturday, Death Before Dishonor, the Ring of Honor pay-per-view, 8 o'clock Eastern time. And I talked with uh, Daniel Garcia recently on Dynamite. He called you a Daniel Garcia cosplayer, is what he said, and says that he is going to be the next peer champion. You and Garcia coming up Saturday night. Well, Garcia likes to call himself a sports entertainer, which I think makes him a cosplay pro wrestler. But that's besides the point, because I feel like Jericho Appreciation Society, this just keeps getting more and more personal between us. But Garcia, a pure championship match is no place for a sports entertainer. It's going to be no frills, no bells and whistles, none of your boys to back you up, just you and me in a fight. But I think we've both said a lot about what's going to happen on Saturday. So let me walk you through your Sunday morning, okay? You're going to wake up. You're going to wake up. You're going to try to roll out of bed. It's going to take you two or three tries. When you finally get sitting up, you're going to limp over to your bathroom mirror. You're going to look up at yourself, and you're going to see a scar. And every day, every day you look in that mirror, you're going to see that scar. And you're going to remember who gave it to you. The Ring of Honor, pure champion, Wheeler Yuta. <laughs> Member of the Blackpool Combat Club this Saturday for the pure title against Daniel Garcia. Wheeler Yuta, a victory here tonight. Tag team action on Dynamite tomorrow. And then Daniel Garcia at Death Before Dishonor this Saturday night. Well, looky here, looky here. We got a uh, dark debut, dark in-ring debut for the man I call Dan House. You might call him Dan Housen. I might get cursed. I got to be careful. He's coming up right now. I mean, it says Dan House on the graphic test, so I, I tend to I, lean towards that. I know, I know. I call him Dan House. His face, I mean, just looks at me, so it's weird. The following contest is Seth Rockball with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from some place far, far away, claiming to be over 300 pounds, Dan Housen. You know, I've grown a little, uh, at first I hated this man, but then, uh, you know, I've grown, he's grown on me. Uh, stuff he's done, he and Hook, with Hookhausen was some impressive stuff, and you never know if that pops up again. 
I mean, I'm sure that has nothing to do with the impressive merchandise numbers at shop.com, does it? What who? For, for who? Who? Hookhausen. For hook? Oh, Hookhausen? You said Hookhausen has shirts on Shop AW? And his opponent weighing 262 pounds, Jake Something. They, they have right. something, right? They have something. They have a couple of shirts, right? That's right, Taz. They have T-shirts right now available for purchase. If you were to go to shopaew.com right now, you could buy a Hookhausen T-shirt. Yes. Well, this is interesting. Couldn't buy, a, couldn't buy an Excalibur yeah. shirt, though. No. No. Yeah, no, I heard. You're banned. <laughs> well, I wish I knew somebody first. in the organization. Oh, oh yeah, Jake, something! Wow, he didn't want to get wow. first. One, two, and oh, wow! Tried to steal a victory quickly like Tony Nese did way back. Jake something kicking at the head of Danhausen after that big elbow strike. Oh, Dan, even Danhausen getting into the Jake something channel. Oh, Lariat by something takes down Danhausen. Well, Giving up a lot of size, obviously, is Danhausen, but he's tough. He's tough, and he's got weird magical powers we're still trying to figure out. And an that, ineffective that lariat did, there. That, that did not work, yes. That didn't yep. work. And uh, just a reminder, oh, as Danhausen oh, almost geez. gets beheaded, that coming up this Saturday, July 23rd, Ring of Honor, Death Before Dishonor, live on pay-per-view. It'll be at the UMass Lowell Songus Center. Tickets available right now, ROHTIX.com and AEWTIX.com. And then next Wednesday night, July 27th, AEW debuts in Worcester, Massachusetts at the DCU Center. Tickets on sale right now, oh. AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. Jake something with a cover, far leg hooked. No. Well, Dan House is showing his toughness right here because, you know, this is a big man he's going against. And he's taking these hard shots and he's resilient. He's kicking out, Dan Housen is. I asked Hook recently, uh, you know, backstage at one of our uh, TV shows. Uh, I said, hey, what is with the, the cursing? Like, you know, Dan Housen. How does he do the curse thing? So Hook looks at me and goes, I can't tell you. And he just walked away. That's how the conversation went. Welcome to well, my I, I mean, and, and also, you can only talk to, to Hook at TV. You never see him outside. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have his number. Uh-oh. The oh. curse. Dan Housen firing off a curse right here. And now that, that trip, Jake something goes down. And Dan Housen up in the corner, but you can see Dan Housen still clutching his midsection. And oh, look at that German suplex with the release. Jake something turned inside out. Yeah, definitely nailed uh, Jake something in with that German suplex. And now Dan Housen is trying to get himself going here and shake off some of that offense from something. Now the elbow as Dan Housen slides through the ropes and knee to the back of the head. Jake something. <laughs> Took the Europe. bait and he got a shoulder to the midsection for his trouble. Danhausen looking for the German suplex again. Swing and a miss by Jake something, but Danhausen, Northern Lights suplex, two, no. Pulling off a lot of suplexes, Danhausen, it's something. Perhaps he thinks he's the inhuman suplex machine. I <laughs> <laughs> got you there. <laughs> Danhausen. Whoa. whoa. Uh -oh. Rano off the ropes. No, Jake something hung on. And the power bomb. One, two. No, Dan Housen able to kick out. That would have been a big, big upset right there for sure. Dan Housen covered again and able to kick out. Man, this is not looking good for Dan Housen. Connor wish Jake something would power slam Bryce Rimsworth, the referee. With his fake name. Hey, Taz, you know what? Bryce has got enough to deal with. <laughs> he sure does. Please don't say what he has to deal with. <laughs> I'm begging you, please don't. <laughs> oh, inside cradle here by Danhausen. Two, three. Danhausen does it. The winner of this match, Danhausen. Well, good victory there for Danhausen. Yeah, Danhausen with the surprise roll up. Shocking AEW Universal, maybe shocking himself too. I thought Danhausen was gonna have to have his agent call Bryce Remsburg about the officiating, but no, he rolled up Jake something and he scored the win here tonight on AEW Dark. Coming up next here on AEW Dark, action in the women's division, tag team action.
as Charlotte and Robin Renegade are taking on Avery Bro and Valentina Rossi. The following contest is a tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first the team of Charlotte and Robin Renegade, the Renegade Twins. These two young ladies are very tough. I struggle with knowing which one is which between Charlotte and Robin. I just call them Renegade. Well, that is that is Robin right there. How do you? How and, uh, am I supposed to believe you? How am I supposed to believe that? Uh, you, there's, t I, you just got to trust <laughs> me, man. I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> and their opponents already in the ring, the team of Avery Bro and Valentina Rossi. Avery Bro and Valentina Rossi, yeah. And you know, Avery Bro, she's, <laughs> she's from uh, the northern part of Sicily, I guess. <laughs> and Valentina Rossi, of course, is inspired by the, the great in Italian wrestlers. Uh, you know, I mean, you've well, got uh, Tracy Smothers. Oh, sure, uh, Tracy Smothers for sure. Uh, Tommy Rich was another. Uh, a wild right, yeah. obviously Dominic Canucci. Bruno San Martino. Yeah. We can go on and on here. And now inside the ring, that is Charlotte Renegade with Avery Bro. Um, and before this match gets too deep, I want to remind everybody, AEW Dynamite Fighter Fest continues tomorrow night live, 8, 7 Central on TBS. Brody King and Darby Allen go one on one after the events of last week's Dynamite. The Varsity Blondes have challenged Christian Cage and Luchasaurus and barbed wire everywhere. Eddie Kingston, Chris Jericho with the Jericho Appreciation Society suspended in a shark cage. All of that and so much more tomorrow night. Dynamite as Fighter Fest continues. Fighter Fest one night one last week was amazing, dude. Uh, tomorrow night's going to be just as nuts again in the state of Georgia. That's right. And, I mean, we've got new tag team champions, Taz. We haven't even addressed yeah, that. I know. We have not. Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland. Speaking of the tag teams, the Renegades are really doing a number here on Bro. Bro. Yeah. Avery Bro grabs that side headlock. And Charlotte sends her into the ropes. Oops, swing and a miss. But the blind tag made by Valentina Rossi. And Valentina comes in the splitting leg drop and now well yeah goes into obviously, a Val cover. obviously Valentina watches some of my old matches back in the day. That's a big spot I used to do. <laughs> but you, you would do it off the tippy top, Taz. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Oh Valentina floats over. Charlotte oh. Renegade and Robin right there with the common Gary caught Valentina in the mouth. There you go. Robin really just is all over Valentina right now. Yeah, the, uh, the Renegade Twins having a much better outing here tonight than they did last Friday on Rampage where they faced Athena and Chris Statlander. And now the back heel trip. Charlotte, the legal member of her team, but the Renegade Twins not over yet. Tag team offense. Do those kind of tags? Oh, oh. <laughs> well, it's not really because she's not on the apron, but I get you drift. <laughs> Cover two. No. That was multiple tags. Bro makes the save for Rossi. And that Valentina, though, she's tough, so make sure you stay on her here. And that's smart right there. Renegade bringing her to the corner of Charlotte. And that's, yeah, that's Robin Renegade, the legal member of the Renegade Twins. And now, Charlotte, though. Oh, but look at the flexibility of Valentina Rossi, the kick. Yes, yes, very good flexibility. Rangy athlete and makes the tag right there as Valentina. And now Avery Bro ducks the lariat. Attempt and comes back with one of her own. A second taken down Charlotte. And now the reversal into the ropes. Avery uh -oh. Oh, lands on her feet. And oh, oh. The, the Renegade Twins, they collided. And now Avery Bro, the scoop and the slam into the lateral press. But no, the things are broken up there. The things are getting crazy here, brother. I'm telling you that right now. It's getting a little nuts. Yeah, I thought we but. peaked with the Tracy Smothers reference. <laughs> you see what they did right there, the old uh, twin gimmick Jones. The one girl yeah, behind leaves, the referee's the, back. Right, right. Stefan Smith didn't even see it. 
How would he know oh. if it's so oh, Charlotte or, or Robin? Valentino Rossi just got taken out on the outside. And, uh, I believe that was Robin just made the uh, the tag to, to Charlotte. And now the assist, uh, just, yeah. the neck breaker, two, three. The Renegade Twins score the win. The winners of this match, Charlotte and Robin, the Renegade Twins. I'm not sure if you heard, twins. someone was yelling from behind us here. You know, she's not legal. That was Bryce Remsburg sticking his head out of the locker room, nosy. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, our our own Renegades get their win, huh? Hey, our own Tony Schiavone is going to ask them why their music sounds like it's a 14-4 modem. Oh, no, 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 no. We've gone through this before. Let's get it straight here. These fans know, right? The little, listen, this little switcheroo routine. This, the, the, the game's up. Rob. Char Robin? Okay. No, you're Charlotte. Robin. And, and you, you're, you're, you're Charlotte. Charlotte. Baloney, you're Charlotte. Okay, so what happened was, you're down, okay, you're down. You were all around of the ring when Stefan's got his back turned. And look, I've, I've seen the singles match. We all saw what happened. The gig is up, okay, we get it. Okay. This was an honest to God, true tag team match. There was no games. We didn't cheat, Tony, we didn't cheat, we didn't lie, we didn't steal, we didn't do anything crazy. You switched out and we all saw it. No, we didn't. I'm Charlotte and that's Robin. I'm Robin. No, no, uh, no, no, no. That's no, exactly no. what it is, Tony. Right. Okay. So. so, here in AEW, whether it's tag team or singles competition, the Renegade Twins, Charlotte and Robin, are here to make a mark. And all the women in the back can get you some. There you go, baby. There they are, the switcheroo, I mean the renegade twins, Charlotte and Robin. Enough, baloney. We'll have more on dark as soon as we sort this out. Well, Tony Schiavone trying to get to the bottom of this, but nonetheless, the renegade twins, and they keep tagging each other, but score the win. Coming up next here on AEW Dark, the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion Mercedes Martinez in action next. Contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Brass City CT, she is the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion, Mercedes Martinez. Mercedes Martinez competing here tonight, and of course, this Saturday night, live on pay per view, Bleach Report, and Fight TV will be defending the Ring of Honor Women's World Championship. Her opponent already in the ring, J-Rod. Uh, ring of Honor's Death Before Dishonor coming up this Saturday night, 8, 7 Central. Mercedes Martinez goes one-on-one -on -one with the professor of professional wrestling, Serena Deeb. And Taz, I mean, it, under normal circumstances, I think you would expect a, uh, you know, a, a sportsman-like scientific wrestling match between two professionals like uh, Serena Deeb and Mercedes Martinez, but there's a little extra something there for this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I completely agree with you, Excalibur. And, you know, also, Serena and uh, nice front ankle pick there by Mercedes. Mercedes and Serena, you know how it is. When you tag up with someone, you're tagged with them, you know, a couple of times. You really start to learn about them, not just as a competitor, but their their attitude with how they mentally go into a match. So that's going to make it interesting of the human chest between Mercedes and Serena for the ROH Women's title. Yeah, I mean, you can watch uh, video all day long, but there's no substitute for, for being there at ringside and watching somebody compete in person because there's so many other intangibles, imperceptible things that happen inside the ring that the camera may not capture. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And behind the scenes, how they go into a match, how they mentally think, the structure that they have, how they structure their match. You know, when you tag with someone, you you know, you, you learn that about them. 
running knee strike there by Mercedes Martinez. And now with the fireman's carry on J-Rod, but uh, J-Rod escapes and swing and a miss by Mercedes, or by J-Rod Mercedes. Now the double underhook. Tough hold to get out of, and she get a high crotch there, and now she's got like a, I don't know if she can do a Samoan drop or something maybe. Oh, snake eyes. She's too close to the corner with that. She get a little further away, there's more impact. J-Rod throws a big elbow strike, and now the handspring elbow. And J-Rod now the running bulldog out of the corner. Could be an upset here, one, two, no. Well, you can see this young, uh, young lady, J-Rod, strong, very powerful. Uh, no relation to A-Rod uh, from uh, baseball fame, but I digress. But yes, very strong athlete, you can tell. <laughs> how, do you, how do you know she's not related to A-Rod? I don't know, it just sounded good, it rolled off my tongue. She might be, but I'm sure you're gonna Google it and wicker it in a second. <laughs> no, you know what, Taz? <laughs> Instead, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep my hands where you can see them, because last, right. last time I put my hands underneath the desk, you thought I was reaching for your coffee maker, and you got upset. Yeah, instead, you stole my ankle chain. Oh, right, here we go. <laughs> oh, J-Rod! Could be... One, two, three, No! Two. Wow. That was close by, by J-Rod. Ah! Yeah. Sorry. People yell, I was gonna start yelling. That's what I do think. <laughs> well, J-Rod with a handful of hair on Mercedes Martinez back in the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion. Ooh. Up to the corner, chopped to the chest. Well, I do think J-Rod's gotta pick her pace up. I was just fixing to say, because you're with a veteran in there, Mercedes, if you take too long, she's gonna get you. Those are some heavy chops by Mercedes Martinez, and now, the snapmare out of the corner, Mercedes waiting, and oh, throws the elbow. Whoa. Mercedes, voice up, J-Rod, and now just, oh, Death Valley driver down to the knees. One, two, no, J-Rod able to kick out. I think that uh, J-Rod's in trouble. I feel like Mercedes fixing to end this match here in a second. You could just sense she's, she's hitting high impact stuff with a lot of physicality. Yeah, we, we saw Serena Deeb victorious earlier tonight sending a message to Mercedes. Mercedes likewise seems to be doing the same, dishing out some uh, some extra punishment to J-Rod is now Mercedes. Snap suplex, turns the corner, and now the second one, Mercedes, going perhaps for the three Amigas. Mercedes. Oh no, instead, the oh, twisting neck breaker off the ropes. Take another look. Let's take a look, look at, at that one. Yeah, that's the uh, replay came out of nowhere, but yeah, look at that, huh? That was a brutal landing for J Rod and Mercedes. Now a handful of hair bringing her opponent up, and now Mercedes looking for the Brass City Sleeper. It is locked in. Just tap out here. Yeah. The win for Mercedes. The winner of this match by submission, the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion, Mercedes Martinez. Well, Serena Deeb, I'm sure, I'm sure Serena was watching that next album. Yeah, Mercedes Martinez just bent her opponent in half with that Brass City sleeper. And if Mercedes is able to get that locked in, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, there we see Serena coming out. I don't think Serena too impressed with what she just witnessed, but it doesn't matter if you're impressed or not. What matters is that this Saturday night, Ring of Honor, Death Before Dishonor, live on pay-per-view, Bleacher Report, and Fight TV. It will be these two, the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion and the challenger, Serena Deeb, going one-on-one -on -one to determine who walks out of Lowell, Massachusetts as the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion. It's gonna be intense, and it is coming up this Saturday night at Death Before Dishonor. Oh, yeah, here we go, a little tag team action. Featuring the Blondes, not just the Blondes Excalibur, the Varsity Blondes, right here. Episode 153 of Dog. Was that, was that the sound of a Tasmanian devil? Yeah, and a panther and a jaguar combined. The following contest is a tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time.
time limit. Introducing first, the team of Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman Jr., the Varsity Blondes. Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr. in action here tonight on Dark, and they will be in tag team action tomorrow night on Dynamite. More on that in a second. Their opponents already in the ring, the team of Terrence and Terrell Hughes. Terrence and Terrell Hughes going to take on the Varsity Blondes tonight and tomorrow night. Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman Jr. have challenged Christian Cage and Luchasaurus for a tag team match after what we saw unfold last Wednesday night at Dynamite, Taz. I'm not sure that's a, a good idea for the Blondes. No, but I, you have to. They have to, if the stuff that we heard Christian say towards Brian Pillman Jr. about the late, great Brian Pillman Sr., you know, who I, was a friend of mine, you know, uh, um, and, and the way that Garrison was treated by Luchasaurus. I mean, I, I don't blame the Blondes. They've got to go right at, right at Christian Cage and Luchasaurus. I, I agree. I mean, you, you have to do something. You have to respond. You can't just get pushed around. But right now, Christian Cage and Luchasaurus, I mean, they, they seem like a, just a force of nature. But right. Brian Pillman Jr. coming in with a quick uh, neck breaker. Garrison drops the leg. And then double back body dropped by the Varsity Blondes. But I'll tell you this, Excalibur, from a pure tag team wrestling perspective, the Varsity Blondes have better chemistry and better flow than Christian Cage and Luchasaurus does and will have in that ring because of all the matches these two young blonde-headed dudes have had, man. They have good chemistry, the Varsity Blondes. They know what they're doing as a unit. That's true. I mean, their, uh, their advantage could, could very much be that. All they need is one big lightning strike, and they can score the victory tomorrow night on Dynamite. Oh, God, don't say that. Don't say lightning strike, please. I, it brings back memories. I, I don't want to get into that. I, I've been hit by lightning, you know, in my life. I don't know if you knew that about me. Watch out. Oof. Wait, not once, but twice. What, I, hold on. Yeah. Hold on, Tess. What the hell are you saying? I'm telling the truth. Oh, oh, you oh, well, man. Twice? Oh, it's a true story. I, I got twice. I got hit in the Bronx. In 1986, okay, now I got hit in 1997 in Des Moines, Iowa, bro, twice. That's right here, lightning, I, I freak out. Griff's got to do something here. Nice reversal. I'm sorry, what were you saying? Uh, uh, hi, boot by Griff Garrett. You, you have completely taken me out of, out of everything. <laughs> two times, bro, two times lightning. Now Pillman's in. So you're the... That's tough enough. There's only, been like, there's only been like two or three people in the world that are hit by lightning twice. I'm one of them. So, so what you're saying is you're, you're the Julia Hart of lightning strikes. Yes. And don't say Julia Hart around the Varsity Blondes because of the history there. We know Good that. Point. Good point. Well, you know, I also do have to mention that tomorrow night on Dynamite 87 Central, live on TBS, Fighter Fest continues. It'll be Brody King and Darby Allen going one-on-one. -on -one, and then barbed wire everywhere. Chris Jericho takes on Eddie Kingston. Excuse me, not Chris Jericho. The pain maker takes on Eddie Kingston with the Jericho Appreciation Society suspended in a shark cage. All of that and so much more as Fighter Fist continues on Dynamite tomorrow night. Yeah, no, that, that barbed wire everywhere deal with Kingston and Jericho is gonna be insane, man. It's gonna be wild, I'm telling you. Oh, rolling. Oh. Elbow strike from Griff Garrison and Ryan Pillman Jr. runs interference and the Blondes score the win. The winners of this match, the Varsity Blondes. That's good for the Blondes. They need this momentum going into tomorrow night in Duluth, Georgia against Christian Cage and Luchasaurus. Yeah, and Taz, to your earlier point, I mean, it was the tag team chemistry of the Blondes that got it done here tonight. And can yes. they do the same yes. Yes. tomorrow on Dynamite? Big one-on-one -on -one matchup right here. We got Fuego do Sol going one-on-one -on -one with the Factory's QT Marshall. Camarado and Aaron Solo will be in the corner of Big QT. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Accompanied by Nick Camarado and Aaron Solo from Freehold, New Jersey, weighing 234 pounds. QT Marshall. QT 
Quincy Marshall, over the, the last few weeks, maybe even months, has been telling many of the stars here on AEW Dark that, you know, they would be better served coming, coming over to the factory, learning how to become a true professional wrestler under the tutelage of QT Marshall. And frankly, a lot of people think that's insulting. Well, he's a big recruiter. And his opponent from Mobile, Alabama, weighing 176 pounds. Fuego, the soul. Well, you're Fuego. He wants to get his hands for weeks on QT Marshall. Excalibur, you really need, I told you QT, he's a fit, because you never call him Marshall. You call him Marshall. Well, where's the heat? It's because I, I pronounce it like it's spelled. It's spelled Marshall. No, like, uh, no, no. You just had Avery Bro out here. If you're going to pronounce her name the way it's spelled, it's Broax. You say, you don't God say damn that. It, Taz. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you're giving up the game. <laughs> Burying you here. Oh, man. Well, before this grudge match gets out of the way, I want to remind everybody, AEW will be making our debut in Columbus, Ohio, this summer on Wednesday, August 3rd, at the Schottenstein Center at the Ohio State University. Tickets available right now at $29, plus fees, AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. And we'll be returning to the Wolstein Center in Cleveland, Ohio, for the final time in 2022. And that will be on Wednesday, August 24th. Tickets available right now at AEWTIX.com. Can't wait, we go to Ohio State, to Columbus. You should come out, man, with a big navy blue t-shirt. You're from Michigan, with a big yellow M on it. Uh, I, I come from a Michigan State household, Taz. All but right, no problem. Much. Spartans, spotty. Yeah. All right, here we go. I know, what, I know what's going on, bro. Big shoulder tackle there. Oh. And, uh, Taz, you mentioned QT Marshall is a big recruiter. That's why he's always hanging yes, around college is. campuses. Oh no, he's no, <laughs> he's no, he's he. Listen, the man is a tremendous coach. Look at just see right here. Look at this. Well, he just got it. Well, that didn't work, but he recruits pro athletes, awesome collegiate athletes, and now Fuego's about to dive on top of his head. Oh, well, maybe not. Big back elbow by QT Marshall. And, you know, I, I, I was joking, but yeah, QT Marshall, I mean, the factory is a top-notch facility. QT, one of the great trainers of pro wrestling going going on today. And, uh, you know, Fuego Del Sol is going to have his work cut out for him against QT. Yeah, he is, besides the fact, you know, giving up a lot of size to QT. You know, we both know QT's a big man. You know, he's, he's, in today's standard size of most successful pro wrestlers, he's on the bigger end, you know, because guys today are a little bit leaner and a little... You know, not as tall as QT, but he's a big man and he knows how to use his experience and his size advantage. And, and the thing about QT also is that he's he's impressively agile as well. I mean, we've seen he is, him. Uh, yes, yeah. Seen him hit the, the QT special. The, I mean, he's never hit it in an AW ring, but no. he's attempted the Phoenix Splash. I mean, that's impressive well, yes. nonetheless. Oh, and again, taking Fuego down. No, he does a lot. He can do. He's very athletic. He was a big time gymnast when he was a child, I believe. Uh, he was. Uh, like uh, like in sixth grade, competing against high school uh, athletes in in the pole vault and the uh, and the horse. The pole vault, which I believe is a track and field event, but right. I digress. Of course. Oh, leg drop, <laughs> cover, lateral press by QT. Fuego able to escape. Uh, yeah. But the thing is, QT's got this Fuego. Let me tell you about this Fuego. I've talked about this before. Fuego's actually. He's a 40-year he's a veteran. He's, he's 62 years old. He wears the mask. You can't tell. That's how old well, you guys I are mean, with Taz, the mask. Like, you, you're 80. Yeah, you look like a kid, yeah, but you're 80 years old. I, I, have aged, uh, I have aged eight years in the, in the last two weeks. But yeah. yes, Tess, I, I mean, I, I did re recently celebrate a birthday, much like QT Marshall. See that? Happy birthday. Belated. To me or QT? Both. But I love both of you. Oh, I love everybody thanks. in this world. I love everybody. QT's going to fly, baby. Big man. Big back elbow. And Fuego Del Sol in a lot of trouble here. The cover. QT not getting the victory yet, but stringing together some very impressive offense. And coming up this Saturday, July 23rd, Ring of Honor's Death Before Dishonor, live on pay-per-view, Bleacher Report and Fight.tv internationally. Samoa Joe and Jay Lethal will collide for the Ring of Honor World Television Championship. Wheeler Yuta and Daniel Garcia 
go one on one with the Ring of Honor Pure Championship hanging in the balance. FTR and the Briscoes, best two out of three falls for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship. The ROH Women's World Championship on the line when Mercedes Martinez looks to defend against Serena Deeb and QT Marshall. Big Gommon Geary and Jonathan Gresham will defend his Ring of Honor World Championship against Claudio Castagnoli of the Blackpool Combat Club. All of that and so much more this Saturday. Ring of Honor's death before dishonor. See that man QT Marshall showing that athleticism right here in Orlando. How beautifully that was done on dark. And QT looking for the lion song, wow. but nobody home. Wow. Now he landed hard, QT, but that was really well done, even though he didn't hit it. Yeah, QT, you can see. I mean, the thing about a a, a move like that, when, when your target isn't there, it, it has a chance to knock the wind out of you, to take your breath away. And then combination kicks from Fuego Del Sol. And Fuego hanging neck breaker. QT Marshall in real trouble here, Taz. Yeah, Fuego's he is. fought his way back into this. He is, and that, you know, Fuego's got a lot of heart. And there's a springboard moonsault right there. And Kip up, and now watch out! Oh, the kick to the head, damn. And Fuego running, shooting star press. Two, no! Yeah, well done there by Fuego. Hey, is Fuego still on the Sammy vlog, uh, the Gavrava vlog? He's still involved with that? Again, Tess, why, why are you going to put me on the spot like that? Oh, bro, I'm so I don't know. <laughs> God, you're killing me. I didn't know. I'm sorry. All right, I digress. Watch out. Fuego steps over. Looking for a pinning predicament here. Two, no. And nice you notice how, how yes. Fuego... Well, yes. I was going to say, but Fuego had a little trouble pulling QT over. I mean, that's the size of the, the size differential between these two athletes. Yeah, but Fuego, for the most part, he has had... QT Rocket, oh, backbreaker, face buster, kip up. I told you, man, that pole vault's coming out the horse, and all his gymnastics, his football background, he wrestled at Freehold High School, he was a stud, everything. And now he's looking for the diamond cutter. QT Marshall, I, the move passed down to him by Diamond Dallas Page. Fuego up to his feet, diamond cutter, no! Fuego reverses. The backslide almost. Perfect counter out of that attempt. Diamond Cutter is a backslide. And, oh, man, I think Fuego's uh, looking good here. Oh, maybe not. Oh, maybe, yeah. Oh, QT spills to the outside, courtesy of Fuego Del Sol. And Fuego coming off the middle rope. Acai Moonsault. And whether there's a size difference or not, Fuego Del Sol not out of this fight yet, Taz. No, no way. Oh, watch Solo tried to get him. Now here comes Colorado. Fuego just launched off of Colorado and hit the spinning DDT, or the tornado DDT, and he oh. sent Colorado into the steps. Those poor steps. Fuego, Fuego could be on the verge of an upset here. We're gonna need those steps. Oh! oh. Fuego's gonna need a new jaw. And now, QT Marshall, oh wait, Fuego! Reverse Horicon Rana! QT Marshall got spiked! Oh! Uh, Fuego, the double stomp, he launched off of QT's back. The hook of the, oh no! QT at the last possible moment kicks out and Well, that was a, a great adjustment there by QT Marshall. Fuego was about to be uh, have his hands clasped over QT's mouth and nose. And nose, yeah. But QT pushed the hands down so he could breathe and so he could make this crawl to the ropes. Well, Nick Camarado able to get those hands in there while the ref didn't see it on the bottom rope. Yeah, Aaron Solo with a a very big assist, and wait, wait, what the hell is this? Matt Seidel and Dante Martin taken out. Aaron Solo and Nick Camarado, and things are just breaking down. Well, we've seen the issues with Dante in the factory and Seidel in the factory, so it makes sense. Oh, but inside the ring, QT, the low blow, and Fuego Del Sol, the pile driver, and QT Marshall. Whoa, no, Fuego kicks out. How the hell did Fuego kick out of that pile drum? Fuego Del Sol 
with more heart than sense. Somehow able to kick out of that pile driver. That was impressive. Oh, come on. Well, man, that, yeah, that guy, that guy back to our left, Taz. He needs to be kicked out of here. He really does. Oh, Fuego oh. Re returns the favor. Oh, Yambag the Yachty, referee, huh? oh. Yeah, the referee didn't see it. And now Fuego, Tornado DDT, but QT, his momentum carried him out of the ring. Oh, Fuego, oh. wow! Gee, man. Another DDT, QT in serious trouble here. Yeah, you can see Fuego realizes that the sense of urgency is getting to that top rope as fast as he can. Fuego del Sol up to the top. The Sky Twister, the cover to an, oh no, he over leveraged Taz. He did, and that instep of QT's boot, his leg was on that rope. I just think Fuego got a little bit ahead of himself there. You're right, it's exactly what did Excalibur. Pull back too much. He had too tight of a, you know, hook up the leg. And Fuego, though, undaunted, returning to the top rope. QT Marshall. This could be an upset, Taz. Fuego now up to the top. Shooting star press Whoa. with a diamond cutter counter. That was and a great counter. And QT's not done yet. Two diamond cutters for Fuego del Sol. And QT scores the win. QT Marshall. Well, that was a hell of a battle between these two guys here. Fuego had a good outing, just not enough to deal with QT and that beautiful diamond cutter off that shooting star. Yeah, QT, a heads up counter to the shooting star press, that diamond cutter, and then a second one for good measure for that man, QT Marshall, to score the win tonight on Dark. Coming up next, the man that will challenge Samoa Joe this Saturday night at Death Before Dishonor, Jay Lethal, in action right now on Dark. One second, one second, cut the music. Cut the music. First of all, guys, I'd like to introduce you to my student, Logan Cruz. Now, Logan Cruz and I, we have a great student-teacher relationship, unlike the student-teacher relationship between myself and Samoa Joe. And that is because Logan, oh, come on. Hey, first of all, I'm here for all of you, and he's not. Second of all, Logan Cruz respects his trainer. Logan Cruz appreciates his trainer, and that is because deep down inside, Logan Cruz knows that I would never manipulate him or exploit him in any way. And that devotion is why I handpicked Logan Cruz to help me warm up and get ready for my match with Samoa Joe. What an honor. But let me tell you one thing, Logan. As your teacher, I've got to inform you that this is gonna hurt me a lot more than it's gonna hurt you. I don't like Logan Cruz's chances. Great opportunity for the young man. That's nice of Jay to have a student here. But um, I didn't like that look in Jay's eyes there at that last sentence, Excalibur. It looked a little dark in his eyes. Yeah, Jay Lethal is very highly motivated, headed in to Ring of Honor's Death Before Dishonor this Saturday night at 8, 7 Central, live on pay-per-view, Bleacher Report, and Fight TV, the thrust kick by Jay Lethal, sends Cruz out of the ring, oh. and Jay comes in, Tope Suicida. Well, I'll tell you that. High velocity, Tope. 
<laughs> I've trained a lot of guys, been in, the ring, in a lot of dojos of wrestling training, and you don't see that done to students much. <laughs> Excalibur, you can speak on that too. You see a, a gigantic tope suicida like that on a student. Not at all. That is, uh, I mean, that, that is shocking. And Cruz oh. tried, tried for that kick, but Jay Lethal caught it, and then a dragon screw on the outside. A, a whole a move that really can tear on, apart and blow some knee out. And this young Logan Cruz, you got to figure, this might be his first pro match. Maybe he's had a couple. I'm not really sure. And you do a move like that to him, and he's your student? That's, that's messed up. Yeah, Jay Lethal, I mean, he is the longest reigning. Ring of Honor, world television champion of all time. And he goes in to uh, cover here by Jay. Cruz kicks out. He goes into Death Before Dishonor this Saturday night facing Samoa Joe, somebody that Jay Lethal called a mentor, called a teacher, and since, uh, since then has turned his back on. And Samoa Joe will have to put that Ring of Honor world television championship on the line against Jay Lethal, but not just Jay Lethal. Sanjay Dutt will be there, and Satnam Singh will be there, and that could spell disaster for Samoa Joe this Saturday night. It could, but listen, I know Samoa Joe very well. I know him better than most people around these parks, and I can tell you, I'm sure he's got something up his sleeve. It's not gonna be too <laughs> too easy to uh, manipulate, even if there's two or three, and you got a guy who's one in a billion or a million in Satnam Singh. Good luck. Oh, man, a dragon screw off the ropes, dude. Look at that. Avalanche dragon screw by Jay Lethal, and now he turns the corner, wrenches the knee, and locks in the figure four leg lock, center of the ring. Logan Cruz needs to tap out. He needs to think about his career, and then he does, yeah. Let go of that now. Winner of this match by submission, Jay Lethal. Well, he left it on a little bit longer, and obviously Jay Lethal, this whole stuff he did with a student here, this, this, uh, this was a direct message to Samoa Joe. Jay Lethal scoring the submission victory on Logan Cruz. And Samoa Joe better watch his back because Jay Lethal is coming for him and that Ring of Honor World Television Championship. And right now, our own Tony Schiavone is going to try to get a word with Jay Lethal. All right, Jay Lethal. This was your student, a dragon screw up the top. Uh, figure four, you destroyed that kid. But I want to ask you about the comments made last Wednesday by Christopher Daniels, talking about you, talking about Samoa Joe, talking about the Ring of Honor title match coming up. Well, Tony, as far as Christopher Daniels is concerned, a couple delusional fans here. As far as Christopher Daniels is concerned, your best friend, Christopher Daniels, your best friend, Samoa Joe, is making you look like a world-class idiot. I mean, think about it. The man is standing up for another grown man who's too afraid to come here and do something about it. Well, I tell you what, Christopher Daniels, you might want to be careful what you say to me because I'm done playing games, and if you're not careful, you'll be a sacrificial lamb led right to the slaughter because there's nothing you can say or any of these people that are going to change the fact that I will be the next Ring of Honor television champion, Tony. You get that opportunity on Saturday at Death Before Dishonor. Samoa Joe will be there to defend the World Television Championship of Ring of Honor against you, Jay Lethal. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, Tony. You're getting a little bit ahead of yourself. That's a death before dishonor. What about today? Right now, Samoa Joe's watching this, and he can't pick his arm up above his head because he's in a world of hurt. But you know what, Joe? You deserve it. You deserve all of that hurt for what you have done to me. And at death before dishonor, I'm going to get my revenge as the student finally surpasses the teacher. But get this, Tony. Get this. The student surpassing the teacher should be a joyous occasion, right? The teacher should be proud of his student. But will Samoa Joe be proud of me? He won't be because he's an egomaniac. He is a user. And at death before dishonor, Tony, he's going to be a user and a loser because I am guaranteeing right now that I will leave death before dishonor as the brand new Ring of Honor television champion. Thank you very much, Tony. Guarantee from Jay Lethal for this Saturday at Death Before Dishonor.
As Tony Schiavone just said, this Saturday, live on pay-per-view, Bleacher Report and Fight TV, Ring of Honor, Death Before Dishonor, from Lowell, Massachusetts, Jay Lethal will challenge Samoa Joe for the Ring of Honor World Television Championship coming up on Saturday night. It's main event time here on AEW Rampage. Daniel Garcia of the Jericho Appreciation Society goes one-on-one -on -one with Alan Angels of the Dark Order in a Ring of Honor Pure Rules match. The Jericho Appreciation Society, the five-star symbol of excellence for sports entertainers. The interesting thing is that Matt Menard does that live every week, Des. It feels right I know, I've seen him do it, it's crazy. He's so talented. Well, following content is step for one fall, and it follows Ring of Honor, your rules. Introducing first, from Buffalo, New York, weighing 187 pounds, representing the Jericho Appreciation Society, Daniel Garcia. Daniel Garcia will be challenging Wheeler Yuta for the Ring of Honor Pure Championship this Saturday night at Ring of Honor's Death Before Dishonor, live on pay-per-view. Bleacher Report and Fight TV. A lot of animosity between the Jericho Appreciation Society and the Blackpool Combat Club. And Alan Angels with a big opportunity, though, to jump the line at whoever comes out of Death Before Dishonor as the Pure Champion with the win here tonight. And his opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, Weighing 184 pounds, representing the Dark Order, Allen Five Angels. And for fans unfamiliar with the Pure Rules match, every match must begin with the Code of Honor handshake. Each wrestler has only three rope breaks to stop submission attempts or pinfalls. After that, submissions or pinfalls in the ropes are legal. Closed fist punches are not per permitted. The first use of a closed fist punch will receive a warning. The second will result in an immediate disqualification. The count on the outside of the ring is a 20 count. And so referee Mike Posey, the Ring of Honor Pure Rules Specialist, drawing the duties for this match. And there we see Posey calling for the code of honor to be observed. Uh, you're correct, if anyone knows these rules, these pure rules, it's definitely referee Mike Posey. He is a bona fide expert at this for sure. And Taz, this is a very interesting style of matchup for uh, Death Before Dishonor coming up this Saturday night on pay-per-view because the Blackpool Combat Club and Jericho Appreciation Society, oh, roll up here, uh, kick out. Uh, the BCC and JAS have been at each other's throats for the better part of this summer, Taz. And so to meet in a pure rules match, very interesting. Yeah, it is. It is. It should be something, uh, it should be tremendous, uh, by the way. So, uh, and it is interesting. has used his first rope break. He has two remaining. Well, you see right there that sarcastic, clapping, mocking style that Daniel Garcia has. I think we get it, Daniel. He's clapping a lot. I think Garcia just trying to get in the head of Allen Angels, and that's the thing about a pure rules match is something that is is so uh, it seems so so rudimentary, a part of a, of a typical pro wrestling match. Getting a rope break on a side headlock in a pure rules match—that's something that can really come back to haunt you as this match continues. Yeah, you got to really think. See, oh, right Angel close fist, stopping himself and coming off the ropes. Angel uh, kick to the midsection. And now Angels sends Garcia into the ropes and the back elbow drops Garcia. Angel, oh, not even on one count. Yeah, it was a good kick out quickly by Garcia, but you see how Angels gets right on him. Doesn't wait. Good round kick. But earlier, he stopped the punch, Angels did, because he realized, you know, the rules. And you, that's what I was trying to say. You have to think during these type matches. You can't make a... Uh, a mistake is a thinking man's style. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's you know, a lot of guys, when they get inside the, the ring, there's part of you that's that's not not necessarily autopilot, but on instinct. You know, it's like you know, you know the pro wrestling rules so well, and then this pure rules concept really forces you to, to reconsider some of those instincts that may come to you naturally as a pro wrestler. Yeah, you hear Garcia telling Alan Angels, you got 20 to come back in. 
<laughs> so, you know. And Angels comes and beats the count and immediately Garcia on him with the stomps. Angels unable to even get to his feet. And of course, tomorrow night, AEW Dynamite Live, 8, 7 Central on TBS. Fighter Fest continues. Brody King goes one on one with Darby Allen. The Varsity Blondes have called out Christian Cage and Luchasaurus, and they will meet in tag team action. And Bar oh, cover here by Garcia. And Barbed Wire Everywhere match. A Barbed Wire Everywhere death match, excuse me. Eddie Kingston versus Chris Jericho, I, and again, excuse me, the pain maker, the pain maker tomorrow with the Jericho Appreciation Society suspended in a shark cage. All of that and so much more as a part of Fighter Fest tomorrow on Dynamite. Yeah, it's gonna be a wild night tomorrow night for sure. Can't wait, like I said earlier, man, Fighter Fest won night one last week was epic. And tomorrow night, it's gonna be just as wild, man. Yeah, Bob Wire everywhere, deathmatch. Oh, man, I, I've been around Bob Wire a lot in my career. It wasn't that style wrestler, but been around it. It's it's no joke. I mean, it's it's something, and it, it's it's a bit of a cliche, you know, to pro wrestling announcers. But Tez, a match like a Bob Wire deathmatch is, I mean, that is potentially career shortening or maybe even career ending. It's dangerous. Anything could happen with that. You know, uh, uh, and that's that's what they got to be careful of. Well, no, nice roll up there, or well, quick roll through, I should say. And now going baby for a Boston Crab, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Or maybe an homage Screaming. to his boss, Screaming. Yeah. Chris Jericho. Yeah, to, for Jericho, yeah, you're right. Angels trying to get his hands underneath him so he could crawl to the ropes, and he does make it to Alan Angels. Alan Angels has used his second rope break. He has one remaining. Oh, Angels is in trouble now, man. He's in trouble. Yeah, with, with only one rope break remaining, that means any pinfall or submission attempts after after that, that last rope break will be legal in the ropes. And again, just something that your instinct says, crawl to the ropes, let me let me get the get out of this the quickest way possible. But that that's something that you really gotta think about in a pure rules match. Yeah, if someone has you in a hold and hurt you, man, it's tough. And you just, like you said, instinctually, you'll grab a rope to utilize that, break that hold. But here, it hurts you when you do that in a pure rules match. And now in the ropes, Garcia. You can see Angel's trying to, trying to hand fight with Garcia. The right hands to the midsection. But Garcia, a right hand of his own. These two men fighting on the ropes. Angels might want something off that second rope because he could fly. Oh, missed it. Angels rolls through. Garcia comes charging in. Angels gets the boot up. But Angels carried out to the apron and he lands on his feet, lands the common carry, and then the drop kick launching off the bottom rope. Alan Angels stringing together some impressive offense. And comes back with the lariat, ducks the lariat from Garcia. Then Enzi Gary sends Daniel Garcia spilling underneath the bottom rope. And Angels coming in. Tope suicida between the second and third rope. Yeah, it took out Garcia right there. A lot of impact. What a shot. And now Alan Angels returns Garcia into the ring. Garcia, you can see a little unsteady on his feet, but that Left arm elbow strike lands, and now Northern Lights suplex by Angels. Kick out by Garcia. Taz, Angels didn't get up on his tippy toes on the Northern Lights. No, he kind of rushed it a little bit. I mean, he had a good, pretty good pop of his hips there. But, you know, getting on your toes a little bit and really bending in inward, it's a weird way to do it, but the, in your bridge really helps you get the win on something like that. But Angels definitely has rocked and has control of uh, Garcia here. The back body drop attempt reversed, and oh, Garcia, the open hand palm strike, and then the backdrop taking Angels for a ride, and then the running boot scrape. Garcia brings Angels out, and then the Northern Lights bomb to, and no, Angels able to kick out. Yeah, showing uh, toughness right there, Angels. Yeah, that Northern Lights bomb, not a technique you see all that often. A, a 
a move that was uh, perfected by Kensuke Sasaki, the, the power warrior of New Japan Pro Wrestling. And Garcia with a deep cut there and now stepping through, looking for the, the sharpshooter too, no! Oh! Big time chop exchange in the center of the ring. Angels and Garcia just getting into a firefight. Open hand slaps being delivered back and forth by both men. Oh, Garcia though opts for the Larry. Wow. Yeah, that might be the shot that Garcia needed here. There's another one, nice duck, maybe a backslide. Backslide, Garcia rolls through, but Angels right there. And Whoa. stalling, pile driver, Garcia got stuck. The cover, two, and no, Garcia able to kick out. Yeah, and that was a really good pile driver, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, you noticed uh, Garcia tried to shift his weight to try to get his feet back on the mat, but Angels used his strength to keep Garcia vertical and spike him with that pile driver. Well, Angels is thinking, what more can I do here? I gotta try and think of something to beat this guy. Angels headed up to the top. The frog splash with the knees up by Garcia. And now the inside cradle again. Angels able to break free. She's got a rear naked choke right there, Garcia. And now Angels, the thing he has to be cognizant of is he, oh, now he uses his last rope break. I was going to say, he's got to keep that in mind. Alan Angels has exhausted all of his rope breaks. And he had to do that, right but that's smart. Yeah, it's very smart. Go ahead, Excalibur by Garcia. I agree, it is smart. Yeah, because now there are no more rope breaks for Alan Angels. And Angels just, do, he's climbing the ropes with Garcia on his back. This is impressive strength by Angels. And Dangerous for both these men. But those elbows right on the corner of the jaw of Alan Angels, after being in that sleeper, Taz, Angels is fading fast. Yeah, he is. He's, he Angels, might be out right now. Alan Angels goes out in the ropes. Garcia wins. Alan Angels exhausting all of his rope breaks proved to be crucial for Daniel Garcia to score the victory here tonight, Taz. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Sets up Garcia like to the point, you know, good momentum, but it was a good battle, good outing by uh, Alan Angels, but I think that third rope break during that rear naked choke, and he had to shake his hand, that's the rules. At the end of the deal, Code of Honor, however mockingly observed here tonight by Daniel Garcia, and wait a second, what is he doing? Now that the match is over, Garcia cinching in the sharpshooter. Wrenching back, looking to make more, to put in more punishment on Allen Angels. And Angels tapping out, but the, the, the match is over. And now, oh, oh, oh. Wheeler Yuna with the Ring of Honor Pure Championship in hand. And remember, these two will meet this Saturday at Ring of Honor's Death Before Dishonor live on pay-per-view. Yeah, Garcia was smart to get out of the ring. Live to fight another day. That other day will be in Lowell, Massachusetts. Death Before Dishonor. Death Before Dishonor, this Saturday, July 23rd, on pay-per-view. Wheeler Yuta and Daniel Garcia will meet with the pure champion. Oh! And Garcia was looking for a cheap shot, but Yuta caught him creeping in. And yeah, that he did. Be the only championship match coming up this Saturday at Death Before Dishonor. Mercedes yeah. Martinez and oh, Serena D for the Ring of Honor Women's World Championship. But Wheeler Yuta, right and left, and Daniel Garcia. And Daniel Garcia heading for the hills as Wheeler Yuta has run him out of town. Plus, FTR will take on the Briscoes. Two out of three falls for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship. And the main event, Jonathan Gresham defends against the Blackpool Combat Club. Claudio Casagnoli for the Ring of Honor World Championship, plus Dynamite tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TBS. Jericho, Kingston, barbed wire everywhere. Tomorrow on TBS.
It's Fighter Fest Week 2. Darby Allen looks for revenge on Brody King. You're facing the pain maker. And the barbed wire everywhere death match. Bring your pain maker. I'm gonna hurt you and enjoy it. AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite, live tomorrow at 8 on TBS.